Hello, I'm Dr. Shavit from the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I'm going to report on the efficacy and safety of transcranial direct current stimulation as a done treatment for obsessive compulsive disorder, a randomized sham control trial. This study was funded by a Sao Paulo Research Foundation, which is a public agency, and there are no conflicts of interest to report. OCD is an often chronic and potentially disabling condition for which there are some first-line treatments like the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and cognitive behavioral therapy, which are effective for about two-thirds of patients, whereas about one-third of them remain significantly impaired after receiving uh, those treatments. Lately, with the growing knowledge on the brain circuits involved in OCD, alternative treatments employing neuromodulation techniques uh, have been tested for treatment-resistant OCD. So why study TDCS? It's a portable device with low costs as compared to TMS, for example. It's a non-invasive technique and uh, has a good tolerability profile. The evidence for studying TDCS came initially uh, from case reports, uh, a few open label studies and one crossover randomized trial, uh, both, uh, all of them reporting on small samples, adopting different electrode montages and reporting varying degrees of response. With this in mind, we designed this uh, study with the objective uh, to assess in a randomized double-blind control trial the efficacy and safety of TDCS in patients with OCD unresponsive to first-line treatments. Our primary hypothesis was that active TDCS would be superior to SHAM in reducing OCD symptoms in patients that had failed at least one previous first-line treatment. The study was approved by our local research ethics committee and was registered at clinicaltrials.gov. It was a randomized double-blind sham control trial. We recruited 44 patients. They were randomized to receive 20 daily sessions of 30 minutes duration of either the active TDCS or a sham uh, stimulation. OCD severity was assessed by an independent rater who was blind to the treatment condition. In fact, all participants and staff members were blind to the treatment condition of the participants, except for a registered nurse and an attending physician from the neuromodulation unit who delivered the sessions but did not belong to the study staff. Our inclusion criteria were age between 18 and 65 years, a primary diagnosis of OCD according to DSM-5 criteria, a minimum baseline Y-box score of 16, and we allowed psychiatric comorbidities except bipolar disorder, substance use disorders, psychosis, and dementia, and OCD had to be the primary disorder. The current use of medication was also permitted as long as the doses have been, have been stable for at least six weeks prior to study initiation. We excluded the candidates that were pregnant, that had uh, suicidal ideation at the time of screening, and that had any specific contraindication for TDCS, like the presence of metal plates on the head. Our montage was, uh, the selection was based on a, a systematic review, including studies with TMS and DBS for OCD, where the authors uh, recommended that the cathodal stimulation over the press supplementary motor area with an extracephalic anode would be a montage more likely to activate structures involved in OCD circuits, like the anterior cingulate cortex and the anterior basal ganglia. So we placed the cathode 
over uh, in the projection of the supplementary motor cortex and the anode over the left deltoid. A 2 million pair current was applied to a surface of 25 squared centimeters. And in the sham group, the device was turned off after 30 seconds of active stimulation. Our primary outcome was the white box score at week 12. And as secondary outcomes, we looked also at uh, depression and anxiety symptoms as measured by the back depression and back anxiety inventories. We registered the adverse events weekly with a structured interview for the assessment of side effects, which is the SAFT. And this is our uh, consort diagram. We screened 91 uh, candidates, 47 were excluded and 44 were randomized to either the active TDCS or the sham stimulation. In the active group, we did not lose anyone over the trial. In the sham group, we lost uh, two participants that discontinued intervention, but were included in the intention to treat analysis and one patient was excluded from the analysis due to a protocol deviation. Moving now to the results. Uh, the, the two groups did not need differ in terms of uh, gender distribution, age, uh, the number of previous failed treatments, and the baseline white box uh, scores. We observed a significant time by group interaction with a greater reduction in baseline white box scores in the active TDCS as compared to the sham group. The improvement in the active group was about 22%, the percent reduction in the baseline white box scores, whereas for the sham group, this reduction was about 10%. Depression and anxiety symptoms uh, also showed a greater reduction in the active TDCS group than in the sham group. However, these differences did not reach a statistical significance. In terms of tolerability, there were no between group differences in terms of the proportion of patients experiencing adverse events or in the total number of, of adverse events. And it was a very well tolerated procedure. So in line with our primary hypothesis, in this sample of patients with severe treatment resistant OCD with multiple comorbidities, active TDCS was superior to the sham stimulation in reducing OCD symptoms. The reduction in depression and anxiety was also greater in, active, in the active group, but these differences were not statistically significant. And TDCS was very well tolerated as we could see only mild adverse events and no attrition. Our results are in line with the two main uh, studies available uh, on TDCS for OCD, one that was already available when we started the study, and another that uh, came just recently. The first one used a, a very similar montage as, as we did, and the second one uh, used a different montage with the anodal stimulation over the press supplementary motor area and the cathode over the right supraorbital area. Uh, so, and also this uh, latest uh, study uh, had a shorter duration and also they, they looked for, a, they looked to a smaller sample. So questions regarding the optimal, the optimal montage of the electrodes, the optimal treatment duration and the profile of subjects who would be most likely to respond to this uh, treatment are all open questions. We conclude by saying that uh, as our sample was composed of patients with severe OCD, the finding that active TDCS was superior to the sham procedure in reducing the OCD, sever OCD severity uh, seems clinically meaningful. These promising findings, in addition to the low cost and good tolerability profile of TDCS, 
justify additional studies to assess its effectiveness in more diverse OCD samples, like patients with less severe OCD, patients for whom pharmacological treatment is contraindicated, or patients who refuse to engage in CBT. I'd like to thank Dr. Renata Mello, who was the main executant of this work, and Professor André Brunoni, who supervised the procedures at the Neuromodulation Unit. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>